Shalom, family. This is Elder Jenkins with the King James Bible University. And I want to speak to you on the topic. Mark, the perfect man, meaning male or female. Family, we know that we are living in some times where it's full of darkness. The knowledge of this world is running rampant. But the true knowledge of God and that light that should be shining in each and every one of us. You see it here and there. But the knowledge of this world is rampant. We want to make sure, family, that we are the ones that's full of light, full of truth. We full of the joy of the Lord, not full of darkness and confusion and a lot of these things that we see go on in this world. Even before we get started with this teaching, we even see a scripture here In the book of Esther, something for you to meditate on. Chapter 8 and verse 16. And it tells us the Jews, meaning the followers of Christ, had light and gladness and joy and honor. Full of light. We should be full of light, full of the word of God, the knowledge of his truth. And not full of the knowledge of this world. Light, gladness, joy, and honor. Very important information. So family, I don't plan on being before you very long, but we're going to allow these precepts to minister unto us. And it's my prayer that someone would be richly edified as we go through this teaching. Mark the perfect man. Once again, this is Elder Jenkins with the King James Bible University. And we're going to go ahead and get started. And we're going to start at the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 1 down to 10. He says, but of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child and they shall not escape but ye brethren are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief ye are the children of light keep in mind we saw here earlier in exodus I mean, not Exodus, uh, Esther, chapter 8, in verse 16, where it says the followers of Christ had light, gladness, and joy, and honor. We see this. So he's telling us, ye are the children of the light, and the children of the day, we are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, 
put it on the breast, the breastplate of faith and love, and for inhalement, the hope of salvation. For Yahweh have not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Creator, salvation and anointed one, Jesus Christ, Yahweh Shah the Messiah, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we shall live together with him. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. He says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So he's telling us, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So let's hit Sirach, chapter 35. In verse 8 and 9, he says, give the creator his honor with a good eye, meaning with a good understanding. And diminish not the first fruits of thine hand. Don't diminish it. You know what he have done for you. You know how you were. I know how I was before I came to this truth. Diminish not the first fruits of thine hands. And in all thy gifts, show a cheerful continence and dedicate thy tithes with gladness. So the information that you've been retaining, this knowledge, this wisdom, and this understanding, this is the types you dedicating it with gladness because you know what he have done for you. How he have increased your learning. He have increased your wisdom, knowledge. He have increased your understanding. That's why I keep going back to this verse in Esther 8 and 16 when it said the, the Jews, the followers of Christ had light and gladness and joy and honor. Dedicate these things with gladness. Thy tithes. Dedicate it with gladness. Isaiah chapter 25 and verse 5. Give you an example how you dedicated with gladness. Chapter 25 and verse 1. He says, Oh, Spirit of God, thou art my God, meaning thou art my guide. I will exalt thee. I will praise thy name. I will confess of thy way. I'm not going to diminish it. I'm going to confess of thy way. For thou has done wonderful things. Thy counsels of old are faithfulness and truth. See, this is how you dedicate your tithes. Tithes is not talking about money. These tithes is talking about the wisdom, the knowledge, the understanding, the counsel that the Most High have given you. And you acknowledging these things that you are retaining this information. He said, for thou has done wonderful things. Thy counsels of all are faithful and truth. This is a representation of. You dedicating these tithes. You ain't heard one verse said anything about money because it's not talking about money. Give the creator his honor with a good understanding and diminish not the first fruit of thy hands. 
and all thy gifts show a cheerful countenance and dedicate thy tithes with gladness. Verse four, he said, thou shall not appear empty before the creator. See, we already saw in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 that we are the children of the light, the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness, so our vessels shall never be empty. Our vessels should be full of light, meaning what? Full of the word of truth, the knowledge of God, his counsels. As we, our knowledge increase, we dedicate our tithes, proving and acknowledging what we have learned, what we have retained, the information that is stored up in our storehouse. Tithe ain't talking about no money. What about your understanding? Do you still understand the way you was as a kid when it come to this Bible? Or are you in, in a deeper level, a deeper understanding of the knowledge of God? Thou shall not appear empty before the creator. See, a lot of us going to play around. We're going to entangle ourselves in all of these worldly things, in these worldly opportunities, in these worldly lifestyles, and we're not going to have no meat stored up in our storehouse. Oh, but when that day come, when we all have to appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Matter of fact, let me go there. I'm just speaking from my mind, but let's go to the scripture. Second Corinthians chapter 10 and chapter uh, second Corinthians chapter five and verse 10. It says, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. That everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he have done. Whether it be good or or bad. See, this is going to be the time of recompense. We got to get our house set in order now. Malachi chapter 3, verse 8 and 9. He said, Will a man rob God? Yet ye have Rob me, but ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? And tithes and offerings. We're not bringing forth an increase. We're not leveling up our understanding of, of the most high's wisdom. He said, ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. We robbed them. We didn't want to increase our learning. We was too busy wanting to watch reality shows, the Atlanta Housewives. We want to watch all of these uh, different shows, love and hip hop. We want to watch the news. We want to put our time to any and everything besides learning his way. Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 3 down to 6. He says, the ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib. But Israel do not know, my people do not consider. Oh, a sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of 
evildoers, children that are corruptors, they have forsaken the spirit of God. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They are gone away, backward. That's what's going on. He said, why should ye be stricken anymore? Ye will re revolt more and more. The whole head is sick and the whole heart faint. From the sole of the foot, even unto the head, there is no soundness in it. No soundness. No wisdom, no knowledge, no understanding. He said, but however wounds and bruises and putrefying sores that have not been closed. <clears throat> One of them open wounds that just get infected. It can never heal because it's infected. It's full of infection and disease. Wounds and bruises and putrefying sores. They have not been closed. Neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. <clears throat> this is the condition that we find ourselves in because we want to do things our own way. We want to allow our flesh to lead and guide us other than letting the spirit of God, Christ, be our shepherd. He's asking a question here in Isaiah chapter 28, verse 9 and 10. He said, whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk. And drawn from the breast. For precept must be upon precept. Precept upon precept. Line upon line. Line upon line. Here little and dear little. So he already asked the question and gave the answer. He said, whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand his doctrine? We have to be weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. All of those things we learned as a kid, we have to be weaned from that understanding. Because he's got deeper information right in the same scriptures that we always had, but we was looking at it carnally and not spiritually. So we have to be weaned from the milk, the carnal understandings. Drawn from the breast. Because the only way to understand his dark sayings in his parables is precept upon precept, line upon line, hear little and dear little. This is the way that we will understand his word. Sirach, chapter 35 and verse 1 down to 3. He said, he that keepeth the law bringeth offerings enough. He that taketh heed to the commandment offered a peace offering. He that requited a good turn offered fine flour. And he that give it alms sacrifice it praise. To depart from wickedness is a thing pleasing to the creator. And to forsake unrighteousness is a propitiation. Verse 5. For all these things are to be done because of the commandment. So he's letting us know. He that keepeth the law bringeth offerings enough. And he that taketh heed to the commandment offereth. A peace offering. Romans. Chapter 7 and verse 1. He says, know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law. 
how that the law have dominion over a man as long as he live it. He's letting us know exactly what's going on. Sirach, chapter 35, verse 6 down to 7. He says, the offering of the righteous make it the altar fat. And the sweet savior thereof is before the most high. The sacrifice of a just man is acceptable. And the memorial thereof shall never be forgotten. He's letting us know, family, when we do things pleasing to the Lord, decent in his outside, he said, the offering of the righteous, the upright, make it the altar fat. And the sweet savior thereof is before the most high. That's that's very powerful statement there is being made. Verse 10 and 11, it says, give unto the most high according as he have enriched thee. Enriched thee with the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. So as you give back to him, you, you proving to him that you have retained this knowledge. This is your tithes and offering proving that your vessel is not empty. But it's full of light. This is your tithes and your offerings. Give unto the Most High according as he have enriched thee. And as thou hast gotten, give with a cheerful understanding. See, he have given you light. Matter of fact, I'll prove the point. Prove the point. Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 8. He said, the creator sent a word into Jacob. And it have lighted upon Israel. So we see we have been enriched with the word of God. You don't see this talking about no money anywhere. These Christians have, have spread that information all over the world, saying that it was speaking of money. But a Christian do what a Christian does. And we know what the meaning of Christian is, so we know exactly how that, how that comes out. So we see here, as we given our tithes and offerings, which is proven that we have retained the information that have enriched us, proven that we have light, meat, doctrine in our vessel, in our temple, and is not empty, he say, give unto the most high according as he have enriched thee. And as thou has gotten, give with a cheerful eye. So, we freely receive it, we have to freely give it. He said, for the creator, recompense it. And we'll give thee seven times as much. So in other words, as you continue to give with a cheerful understanding, he's going to continue to increase your level of knowledge. That's what he's saying. And to prove the point, Let's go right here to Malachi chapter 3 and verse 10 down to 12. 
He says, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse. As you learning, you taking notes, you meditating, you studying and reviewing this information you learn, bring it all into the storehouse in your temple. That there may be meat, light, doctrine, the word of truth in mine house. He's saying, prove me now herewith, said the Spirit of God, the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. See, this is the same information that he just got through telling us in verse 11, where he said, for the creator recompense it and will give thee seven times as much. You ain't even going to have room enough to receive this blessing that I'm going to give you, what he's telling us. And seven times as much, he going to give you more than enough he going to bless you abundantly. He going to give you enough until completion. He going to give you enough until your time is expired. You're going to have more than enough. Seven times as much to the time of completion. Verse 11. He say, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. And he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit, her fruit before the time in the field. So in other words, <laughs> as you're learning, you're not rushing out there to teach and show somebody, son. You, you're learning for yourself until you get a, a sure foundation. Rooted and grounded in his word. Once you get a sure foundation and you're rooted and grounded, then you can simulate out that information. This is what's going on. Verse 12, he said, all the nations shall call you blessed why because they're gonna hear the words the oracles of god that is coming out of your mouth for ye shall be a delightsome land a delightsome nation of people said the spirit of god of hosts sirach Chapter 35 and verse 12 down to 17. He said, do not think to corrupt with gifts for such he will not receive. And trust not to unrighteous sacrifices for the Lord is judge. He is the teacher, and with him is no respect of persons. There's no respect of persons with him. He will not accept any person against a poor man, one that's lacking knowledge, but will hear the prayer of the oppressed. He will not despise the supplication of the fatherless, nor the widow when she poured out her complaint. Do not the tears run down the widow's cheek and is not her cry against him that causes them to fall? He that Serve it, the Lord shall be accepted with favor. And his prayer shall reach unto the clouds. The prayer of the humble pierces the clouds. 
until it come high, until it come nigh, he will not be comforted and will not depart till the Most High shall be whole to judge righteously and execute judgment. So we see it's very important to serve the Creator. Because he's telling us, he that serveth the creator shall be accepted with favor and his prayer shall reach the clouds. Mm. He said the prayer of the humble pierceth the clouds. Until it come now, he will not be comforted and will not depart till the most high shall be whole to judge righteously and execute judgment. Important information. Not only that, we see here in this last line in the book of James, chapter 5 and the last line of verse 16, he says, The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man, a righteous male or female, avail it much. The effectual fervent prayer. He just told us that it pierced the cloud. It's being crystal clear with us. Sirach, chapter 35, verse 18 and 19. He said, for the creator will not be slack neither will the mighty be patient toward them till he have smitten and sunder the loins of the unmerciful and repaid vengeance to the heathen, the adversaries against God. Till he have taken away the multitude of the proud and broken the scepter of the unrighteous. Till he have rendered to every man according to his deeds. And to the works of men according to their devices. Till he have judged the cause of his people. And made them to rejoice in his mercy. This is what he's going to do. Sirach chapter 4, verse 11 down to 21. He said, Wisdom exalted her children and laid hold of them that seek her. He that loveth her, or he that loveth her, loveth life. And they that seek to her early shall be filled with joy. He that holdeth her fast shall inherit glory. And wheresoever she entereth, the Lord will bless. They that serve her shall minister to the Holy One. And them that love her, the Creator doeth love. Whoso giveth ear unto her shall Judge the nations. We're going to teach the nations. And he that attendeth unto her shall dwell securely. If a man commit himself unto her, he shall inherit her. And his children shall hold her in possession. For at the first she will walk with him by crooked ways and bring fear and dread upon him and torment him with her discipline until she may trust his soul and try him by her laws. Then will she return the straight way unto him and comfort him and 
show him her secrets. But however, if he go wrong, she will forsake him and give him over to his own ruin. Observe the opportunity and beware of evil. And be not ashamed when it concerneth thy soul. For there is a shame that bringeth sin. And there is a shame which is glory and grace. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Verse 16 down to 23. He says, Know ye not that ye are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seem it to be wise in this world, let him become a fool that he may be wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, he take it the wise in their own craftiness. And again, the creator knoweth the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. Therefore, let no man glory in men. For all things are yours. Whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world or life or death, or things present, or things to come. All are yours, and ye are Christ, and Christ is God. Being very, very crystal clear with us, family. Psalms, chapter 37 and Verse 37 down to 40. He says, Mark the perfect man and behold, remember the upright. For the end of that man, that male or female is peace. But the transgressors shall be destroyed together. The end of the wicked shall be cut off. But the salvation of the righteous is of the spirit of God. He is their strength in a time of trouble. And the spirit of God shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them. Because they trust in him. Psalms. Chapter 20. 1 through 9. The spirit of God. Hear thee in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob. Defend thee. Send thee help from the sanctuary. And strengthen thee. Out of Zion. Remember all thy offerings. Remember what be said about these tithes and these offerings. That is not money. But is retaining the information that you have learned. Remember all thy offerings and accept thy burnt sacrifice. Salah. Grant thee according to thine own heart and fulfill all thy counsel. 
we will rejoice in thy salvation. And in the name of our God, the way of our God, we will set up our banners. The Spirit of God fulfill all thy petitions. Now know I that the Spirit of God is saved, his anointed. He will hear him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand, his power. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, their own private interpretations. But we will remember the name, meaning the way of the Spirit of God, our God, meaning our God. They are brought down and fallen. But we are risen and stand upright. Say, Spirit of God, let the king hear us when we call Psalms 22 and we'll start at uh, verse 22 down to 28 he said I will declare thy name thy way unto my brethren in the midst of the congregation will I Praise thee, will I confess of thee. Ye that fear the Lord, ye that desire the Spirit of God, praise him, confess of him. Tell what he have done for you. All ye the seed of Jacob, glorify him and fear him, meaning desire him. All ye the seed of Israel. For he have not despised nor abhorred the afflicted, the affliction of the afflicted. Neither have he hid his face from him. But when he cried unto him, he heard. My praise shall be of thee in the great congregation. I will pay my vows before them that Fear him, meaning that desire him. The meek shall eat, meaning the meek shall learn and be satisfied. They shall praise the Spirit of God. They shall confess of him that seek him. Your heart shall live forever. All the ends of the world shall remember and turn unto the Spirit of God. And all the kindreds of the nation shall worship before thee. For the kingdom is the Lord's, and he is the governor among the nations. That's what's going on. Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 9 and 10. He said, for the Lord's portion is his people and Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. He found him in a desert land and in the waste howling wilderness, he led him about. He instructed him. He kept him as the apple of his eye. That's what he did. Baruch. Chapter 4, verse 2 down to 4. He says, turn thee, O Jacob, and take hold of it. Walk in the presence of the light thereof, that thou mayest be illuminated. Give not thine honor to another, nor the things that are profitable unto thee to a strange nation. O oh, Israel, happy are we for things that are pleasing to Yahweh are made known unto us. Verse 1. This is the book 
of the commandments of God and the law that endured forever. All they that keep it shall come to life, but such as leave it shall die. So family, we see here as we mark the perfect man, meaning the perfect male or female. He told us clearly that this one, this individual is going to be in peace right here in Psalms 37 and 37. He said, Mark the perfect man and behold the upright, the just. For the end of that man, that male or female, is peace. So family, I hope and pray something was said to help you along the journey. Letting us know that we have to have meat in our storehouse. And I want to hit this one last scripture one last time. In Sirach 35 and 4. He say, thou shall not appear empty before the creator. So meat has to be in our storehouse, in our vessel. Very important information. So it's my prayer that someone received this word and took it in. And allow this word to work on your heart and compel you to be converted and healed to the knowledge of truth. So I'm going to say a happy Sabbath to everyone as we begin this Sabbath morning and a shalom to everyone. Until we meet again, shalom.